Uh, what's up guys, this is John, and in this video I want to share with you uh, the latest theme for the MU Elect. This is play on the N2 Plus single board, uh, and when I boot it up, I have two options. I can go to Android, or I can go to MU Elect. Uh, I'm going to show you MU Elect this video. I'll do a separate video for Android, but you can turn the N2 Plus into an Android device, which is awesome. You can play uh, Game Pass, Xbox Game Pass games through the app on there. Uh, you play Game Pass games. Um, super cool. Uh, I'll show you, I'll save that for a future video, but I have 69 cores currently on this, uh, and I just want to show you with you, share with you real quick how fast they load, which is pretty amazing. This is a pretty great uh, machine. It puts the original Raspberry Pi to shame for sure. Uh, really, really powerful stuff. You can play uh, games from Saturn to uh, 3DO, uh, PlayStation 1, uh, etc. Um, so a lot of cool things. I do want to give a couple shout outs. Uh, the layout is done using HyperPy, and it's uh, he goes by C K A U. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it, Cal. Uh, and also, my buddy, shout out to my buddy Kurt, aka Kubert Addict One, here on YouTube. Uh, and uh, he did the video and the customization. The theme is called Mutt M U T T. Um, so one cool thing about this is also you have retro achievements. Uh, so currently, I'm not online at the moment, uh, but what when you play these games online. Uh, certain games will have retro achievements and it's all look, hooked up online and just like you get achievements uh, which, which is awesome, it keeps track of your achievements this is what core called Daphne and again this is probably one of my favorite themes you can see the animation here, pretty amazing uh, Dragon's Lair is definitely classic uh, go back to, to arcade here um, several different cores for, for arcade so I have MAME, uh, Daphne um, Check out meme. You can hit a uh, button, go back. It's the the B button. I'm actually playing this on the Xbox uh, Series X controller, which is awesome. It's wired in. Uh, there, there's no Bluetooth right now, but uh, I am playing using the new Xbox One X, which it reads as a normal Xbox controller. Uh, Daphne is everything with laser disc games, and uh, I'll show you a game here, some gameplay here. This is by Sega. Uh, this particular game, I think it came out in 83, and that's really cool thing about this layout is it tells you that when the game came out, and this particular game came out in 83, Dolly Midway presents, uh, with associated with Sega, of course, we'll add some credits, and get going here shortly. So the background's all Laserdisc, which is awesome, and it's kind of overlaid through with the, using the graphics. Uh, controls are up is down, down is up, so it's a little tricky to to show you gameplay. Now in this video, I'm gonna the main point of this video is to kind of show you the theme of, of this uh, the mutt, but uh, I'll show you a few games. Uh, but this, you know, you can see the there's a frames per second as well. Uh, let's go, um, and it runs at a pretty high. Most games run at 60 frames per second. Here's a classic Atari 2600, of course, uh, grandfather of video games. But one thing really cool is lately they've added these manuals. So you can view manual, hit select, and it will load, people have scanned manuals in here. So it's a pretty cool, uh, and it's diff for different systems as well. This is obviously an example for Atari 2600. But the fact that someone took the time to do that is pretty amazing. And I love the layout. You have a nice big picture of gameplay. You have a, hit, uh, a blurb about history of the game when it came out. Uh, last time you played it, you can uh, arrange uh, everything alphabetical or, or when most recently played or by rating This is the 5200, which is a really cool thing. I like this particular intro, which is awesome uh, 7800 Links, which is I got the links when it first came out uh, Actually and led the links it just eight batteries really really quick and there's only a whole handful of games 76 total uh, that, that came out at least that I have on here um, but uh, really, really fun. Let me show you an example. This is Batman Returns, and this game is actually really challenging. But I just want to kind of share something that you can do. This is uh, Retro Arch, uh, and um, I just want to show you. It shows you the frames per second there in the top corner, top right corner. If you hit select, it will flip the image 90 degrees. So just be aware of that. Uh, select Y will take you to. Uh, the option there, so go to here. Here it is. You can you do save state. You can uh, you can load states. Uh, I just want to show you overlays. This is uh, shaders, and there's a handful of different shaders. You can you can load different CRTs, different scan lines. 
you can do it either by game individually or you can do it by by core with a group of games so they're all like that i'll try crt see if this makes a difference let's go ahead and flip it uh, maybe a little subtle you can kind of subtly see some some lines there nothing crazy let's see if i can can show you a different example a more one that's uh a little more clear as far as lines go. Kind of mimic the CRT look. A lot of the, the mini systems, the Nintendo Mini, the NES Mini, obviously Super Nintendo Mini, PlayStation Mini, all those are actually run in emulation. <laughs> so, there you go. They, they can see more visible lines. The Lynx was an interesting system because you could actually play it left-handed as well. Flip the screen upside down and play it D-pad on the right-hand side, which is kind of unique. We'll go and escape out of that. Wonder Swan handhelds. Both regular and color. You can also run music in the background. So you can have a setting where you can run music. This is MSU1. Uh, these are really cool games. And what people have done have enhanced the audio uh, to these games. So uh, some people have turned it, kind of called it the CD, the Super Nintendo CD, right? Um, but there, there's some really good examples. Here's an example of Zelda. Someone's gone back and... Did some animation. I just want to kind of share with you an example briefly on, on what this can do. And if you have uh, a cart, if you have the SD to SNES flash cart, you can actually run this on uh, the actual hardware on the Super Nintendo, which I've done and done a video before. So uh, this doesn't really change the actual hardware itself, but it's pretty amazing. And it's too bad that games like this didn't come out uh, for the Super Nintendo back in the day because I think it's pretty amazing and. It would have blown Sega CD out of the water because it's the color. You can see the colors are more vivid, and and the video um, is just more more vivid than you know the Sega CD would be. So, uh, really, really cool. Pretty awesome. I think it's amazing that someone took the time to do the animation, the voiceover, the voice work, all that good stuff. It's it, it blows my mind. It's pretty amazing. Good for people, and Link to the Past is probably one of my favorite Zelda games, honestly. Ocarina of Time, of course, is up there too, but uh, Link to the Past is definitely up there. Here's ColecoVision, one of my favorite consoles. I love this intro. It takes a little bit of from the commercial, and then it kind of morphs into the game interactive game box, which is awesome. A lot of fun arcade ports to this console came out kind of after Atari 2600, before the NES. Commodore 64, a lot of games on here, over 3,000. Um, but Commodore 64 is classic, one of the best-selling computers of all time. Same with Amiga by Commodore. A really fun, um, fun platform. The Amiga 32, uh, CD32 never came out in the States. It came out in Europe and in Canada. Um, so it's good to see kind of play some of these games and, and check them out. Right now I need to load some uh, images you can just scrape them and if you're connected online just scrape it and it'll it'll scrape all the box art gameplay all that good stuff this is scrum and all these games are like point and click games um so king's quest for example uh day of the tentacle scrum vm so it's a pretty fun one um and television which is classic of course ms dos which are games like doom and other ones msx msx2 uh, really popular platforms in Japan that came out never reached the States, but games like uh, Metal Gear uh, saw started on the MSX and were later ported to the NES, obviously, or the Famicom. And, uh, you know, Vetrix is, a, Vetrix is, of course, classic. Really cool intro. Some of these intros are, are, are better than others. Uh, but I just think I love the display. Uh, PC Engine, Splatterhouse, of course, uh, CD-ROM 2. Again, you can see uh, it has the logo of the game, the box art, pretty professional, really well, well laid out. Super Graphics, only five games came out for it. It was the, the uh, successor to the PC Engine in Japan and didn't do very well. Uh, Ghosts and Goblins is probably the best game for it. There was a good port for that. Super Graphics 16, PC FX, which also came out uh, after the, the Turbo Graphics and came out in Japan only and didn't sell very well. Game & Watch, cool. There's a handful of games on here. And not just Game & Watch, but other handhelds. 
and they emulate really well. The first Nintendo's first handheld line and really influenced first D-pad that they'd have and all that good stuff. Uh, Famicom, of course, is classic. This is a really cool intro. Kind of reminds me of the ColecoVision, takes the intro of the commercial and then kind of morphs it into the, the box, which is awesome. So really well done there. Famicom Disk System. This is the intro. Games like Doki Doki Panic came out, which would turn into being Super Mario Brothers 2 uh, in North America. Game Boy, it's probably one of my favorite intros. Check this out. How cool is that? That's that's pretty rad. Uh, take, again, taking the interactive box there, but love the Game Boy. Again, picked that up when it first came out. Um, that that sound, that music there of uh, Super Mario Land just throws me back. Uh, just definitely a classic game. Very short game. Uh, but very classic. Super Nintendo, now you're playing with power. You also have a core in here available that uh, is uh, N64 disk drive, which is cool. So that's a core. I don't have a on here yet. Um, and you can skip to the side there, because I'll briefly, but you can skip different. Instead of scrolling through, you can kind of do a fast track, skip through. If you hit the trigger buttons, it will scroll through the game list much quicker as well. Uh, Virtual Boy, uh, 23 games in the catalog. Uh, some of them only came out in, in Japan. A game I would recommend check out, if you can, only came out in Japan, is uh, Space Invaders. It's an amazing port for the Virtual Boy. N64, which is classic. Love the N64. I just want to kind of show you how it looks. and uh, It does upscale. I just want to show you that it, the graphics look better play on this than it would on a normal... N64, I just want to kind of share with you. And for years, N64 was kind of a hard system to emulate. Um, the people have caught up. That's evolving so quickly that it's it's gotten much better now. And uh, they're even starting to emulate GameCube now, and uh, which is pretty crazy to think about. Um, but yeah, this is back when Rare, Rare was just on its game. This and Perfect Dark were, were amazing. And this is probably one of the best... Games based on a, on a movie, honestly. Tie-ins. So we play this game all the time. Multiplayer. Before there was online multiplayer, right? <laughs> there was all local multiplayer. It takes a few minutes to, to load up here. Here it is. And you know the buttons are you can already map you can obviously map and, and customize the the button mapping on the X using the Xbox controller, um, but uh, it's already done so. And, and using the analog stick, the only thing with the NC4 controller is only one analog stick. So controls haven't really aged very well in, in first-person shooters for the N64. Unfortunately, <laughs> it makes it a little more challenging. But and yeah, this game throws me back and, and back in the day, back in high school, I used to play this game a lot. What are some N64 games you guys recommend? Please leave a comment below. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I mean, this is definitely up there in one of the best games. I think uh, F-Zero, the Zelda games, of course, come to mind. Mario 64. Uh, game Boy Color. I didn't get huge into the color, honestly, back in the day when it was out. Um, although, I've grown to definitely appreciate the color. And same thing with the Advance. Here's GameCube, but right now it's not ready to share with you gameplay-wise. Uh, it is work. It is does playable, um, but it's not ideal quite yet. Uh, so I don't want to show you any gameplay quite yet. But uh, Game Boy um, Advance. I think one of my favorite handhelds is the Game Boy Mini, which is the Game Boy Advance. And speaking of Mini, you got the Pokemon Mini here. Um, this is 3DO, and for a while, this platform was really hard to to emulate and. Uh, there's just a lot of good games for the 3DO that I think anyway you should check out. Street Fighter 2 is one of them. Uh, Gex is another one. Crash and Burn uh, is really fun. That was a game that I think that was a pack-in early launch title. Um, D is another one that's really good to check out. Let's check out Gex. Oh, wrong button. Really fast load times as you can see. Got this hooked up to an external hard drive too, by the way, so I can get some good storage for, for games. 
Not too bad for load time. Crystal Dynamics. 1995. My neighbor, my good friends in, in junior high, uh, had a 3DO and I used to go over there and play. I remember the system itself was super expensive. The games were not cheap. Kind of like the, the, uh, the Neo Geo back in the day. But man, this, this is really fun uh, platformer Gex. They need a follow up to it for sure. It's been a while since I've, I've played this game, but this is kind of over a map view of the level you need to check out. And I just love his commentary throughout the game too. He'll talk, and it's just it's just a funny, funny game. He reminds me of the Geico Gecko. <laughs> it's like. Geico should sponsor this game. I think it'd be kind of funny. Uh, Gex, the Gecko, Gecko, Gecko. Say that three times fast, right? You can jump and I think spring on these things. There you go. Anyway, you guys, you guys get the idea. Uh, quick kicks out of there. Different ports. Um, you got beat 'em up. These are games that people have created that are based on like Streets of Rage kind of engine. Uh, Atom Atom Wave. Atomus Wave is uh, a great arcade. There's games on here that are, are pretty amazing. Um, Dolphin Blue uh, is definitely up there. Metal Slug 6. And these games, even though they came out in you know the early 2000s, uh, have really aged well visually, audio-wise. Just an amazing game. Um, SU-1000 by Sega. This is kind of similar to uh, the ColecoVision, as far as graphically and all that. I got the Mega Drive, no no um, intro there for the Mega Drive. But Sega Master System, there's, there's one. Did really well in uh, Europe and in Brazil, especially. Uh, not so much in North America, because Nintendo just had so much dominance over the, the platform. Love the Game Gear. A lot of the games that came out for the Game Gear were ports from um, the Sega Master System. I think my favorite Sega system is probably going to be the uh, probably the Dreamcast, followed really closely with uh, the Genesis. Uh, Sega CD. There was a 32X right before that. Uh, Sega Saturn. This does play Sega Saturn fairly well. No issues that I'm aware of, anyway. got that Dreamcast, which is great. Um, Sonic Adventures, one of, my, you know, one of my favorite Sonic series. Crazy Taxi, great arcade ports, House of the Dead. So many classics. Um, obviously, if you're playing uh, with House of the Dead, you can't use a gun because uh, this is off. it won't work off of uh, uh, HDTV. You need the standard uh, CRT to play that, but uh, you know, Typing the Dead, all that good stuff. Classic. Classic. Naomi's another arcade uh, core. These are the Sharp, this, these are Sinclair computers that were not as popular in, in North America, but popular overseas. So I don't know too much about the Sinclair, the Neo Geo systems of course, which are great, the CD as well as standard Neo Geo, uh, MBS, AES, slash both. A lot of great fighters and shooters, probably what it's known for best. I have an arcade at home, a four four slot, and um, you can get a cart with a multi cart with a ton of games on them at once. But uh, yeah, Metal Slug's a great series, and Neo Geo Pocket. That's cool with the moon. Baseball stars, it's great. You get the pocket color. This is an interesting in image. Uh, intro kind of looks blurry intentionally. Kind of messes with my eyes. PlayStation 1. Um, so there's 297 games in my library. Um, it, those are the only ones that's been scraped so far. Uh, there's more. There's thousands. Um, but uh, yeah, Final Fantasy 7. I mean, Crash Bandicoot. 
Yeah, a lot of these games don't have been scraped yet. So I can go and go to options, scrape it. Um, PSP. Thank you so much for watching, guys. It's the end of my video. Uh, I'll have more information about this later on. I'll post some updates as well. Shout out to, again to Kirk, a Hubert Addict One, for the help with this. Uh, he's an amazing channel, amazing guy, good friend. And we'll see you guys soon. Take care. Game on.